1949 was a significant year for U.S.-China relations. October of that year marked the founding of the People's Republic of China, ending civil war between the Chinese Communist Party and the Nationalist Party, with the latter retreating to Taiwan. But just a few years before, the U.S. and China's Nationalist Party had a relationship, even amid tension between the Nationalist and Communist parties. In the early 1940s, the U.S. sent aid to China as it battled Japanese forces in the War of Resistance. The United China Relief Organization raised aid in the states by selling posters like the ones on your screen right now for Chinese residents during its conflict with Japan amid civil war. And it was during this time a four-policeman post-war council was proposed by then-President Franklin Roosevelt as a keeper of world peace. It included four major allies of World War II, with the United Kingdom, the U.S., the Soviet Union, and China, led by Chinese President Chiang Kai-shek. As many of us know, none of that came to pass, and U.S. relations with two of those four nations soured. But over decades, Washington has managed to work with the country. In 1972, President Nixon traveled to China after years of tense diplomatic relations. It marked the first time an American president visited since the People's Republic of China was established in 1949. And in 1978, the U.S. and the People's Republic of China announced they'd recognize one another and establish official relations. The agreement recognized China as a sole government and withdrew diplomatic recognition from Taiwan. But recent years have seen major tests for the relationship. Former President Trump's relationship with Chinese President Xi saw a visit to Mar-a-Lago only to shift in 2020 as he placed blame on the nation for, in his words, unleashing a plague. In the fall of 2022, President Biden met with the Chinese president in Indonesia discussing a range of topics from climate change to North Korea. But a lot has happened between that last meeting and now. Where the relationship leads to next is anyone's guess, but here's a closer look. Just as state leaders call for a cooling of tensions between the U.S. and China, it seems the temperature only continues to climb. In mid-June, Secretary of State Antony Blinken visited President Xi Jinping to discuss relations and conflict aversion. He made clear that while we will compete vigorously, the United States will responsibly manage that competition so that the relationship does not veer into conflict. But soon after, President Biden made remarks at a campaign reception, saying that President Xi was upset about the spy balloon shot down in February as a, quote, great embarrassment for dictators when they didn't know what happened. The spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry called the comment extremely absurd and irresponsible. It's still unclear what the impact of the comments will be. The war of words is not the only recent flashpoint between the two superpowers since the high-profile spy balloon incident earlier this year. In April, a federal court in New York brought charges against two men allegedly connected to an illegal overseas police station operating in Lower Manhattan. The Department of Justice says it was operated by a provincial branch of the Ministry of Public Security of the People's Republic of China. Now just imagine the NYPD opening an undeclared secret police station in Beijing. It would be unthinkable. There are over a hundred so-called police stations around the globe, supposedly to intimidate dissidents living abroad. Cities in Canada, Germany, the Netherlands, and others have opened investigations into alleged police outposts. The Spain-based human rights NGO Safeguard Defenders has documented alleged stations across these countries. China has denied these are police outposts and insists they are stations to assist with services like driver's license renewals. In June, to add to security concerns, the Wall Street Journal reported that China was planning to build a new military training facility in Cuba, according to suggestions from U.S. intelligence reports. The Pentagon denied initial reports. That reporting, I can tell you based on the information that we have, that that is not accurate, uh, that, that we are not aware of China and Cuba uh, developing any type of spy station. But it has yet to comment on the latest investigation. According to Gallup polling this year, for the third time in a row, Americans are most likely to name China as the greatest adversary of the U.S. over Russia, North Korea, and Iran. A Pew Research Center survey in March showed that the greatest concerns for Americans were specifically the partnership between China and Russia, tensions between China and Taiwan, and the country's record on human rights.
As U.S.-China relations continue to be a major concern for many Americans, the Biden administration faces an uphill battle to de-escalate tensions, all while refusing to cede to arguably its greatest economic competitor.